Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. I suppose if we took a survey uh, within this group, we'd probably find that uh, a lot of people in this group have experienced unanswered prayer. And what I mean by unanswered prayer is that you ask for something specific, whether it be for uh, a, partic a particular job or for the healing of a loved one, uh, you name it, something specific. And that specific thing didn't happen. And maybe because of that, and maybe because it happened multiple times, maybe it discouraged you from praying at all. Or maybe it made you very anxious about the future because you could look back on times when you came across problems and difficulties and you brought them to the Lord, and yet you found that nothing came out of it, that at least on the surface, Everything remained the same. The circumstances didn't change. And so you become very anxious about the future because you think, well, uh, there's there's nothing governing the future. Uh, I'm just as susceptible as everyone else of encountering these uh, bad situations, uh, these tragic events. And so I am anxious about uh, the future and what could happen. And so because of unanswered prayer, perhaps that has caused us to not pray as often as we otherwise would, or become very anxious about the future. Well, in our reading today, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I think we get a word that uh, should be very helpful for us whenever we experience these type of things. Because what we have in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is an apostle himself not having his prayer answered. Uh, that is the apostle Paul. Even the Apostle Paul, as close as he was to the Lord, as faithful as he was to the Lord, as much as he had endured for the Lord, he himself experienced unanswered prayer by the definition given earlier. Apparently, Paul had some type of thorn in his flesh. Uh, in verse 7, he says, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Uh, he had experienced. Um, he, he had experienced the third heaven. He was a, he was able to see uh, things that were going on in the third heaven and heard uh, language that was forbidden to speak. And uh, he had these this glorious experience. And and to humble him, the Lord allowed him to have this thorn in his flesh, whatever this thorn in the flesh was. And so he prayed about it in verse 8. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. So whether it was three prayers or three seasons of prayer, either way, he prayed that the Lord would take away this thorn in his flesh. He, he prayed for a specific thing. This problem that is vexing me, Lord, please take it away. And verse 9, and he said to me, that is the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So there it becomes pretty clear that this prayer was not answered, at least not specifically. The answer that he got was, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Basically, the Lord said, I'm not going to take away this thorn in the flesh because it's serving a particular purpose in your life. But what I will do is give you strength, give you power that will help you to endure that weakness and endure that thorn in the flesh. And so we have this other side of prayer to where, on the one hand, the Apostle Paul didn't get the answer for his uh, to his prayer, at least not specifically. But on the other hand, what he did get was the strength and the power to endure uh, the suffering, to endure uh, the situation and to overcome. And so this is a tremendous truth that we can take to heart that should help us both if we feel like we've not prayed as much as we otherwise would have, or if we become ang uh, anxious about the future, or, or if both have occurred. That is we we know from this uh, example that the Lord sometimes doesn't answer our prayer because there's a specific purpose that he's trying to fulfill in our lives and in the lives of others. 
sometimes for the greater good, God has to allow us to endure certain things uh, in order for certain other things to take place uh, that will be for the better good. But what he will do, even though he may not change the situation, is give us strength and give us power in that circumstance or that situation to help us to endure it. And therefore, we can have confidence in prayer because when we come to the Lord, we know he's going to do one of two things or maybe two, both things. He's going to either uh, help us and fix the situation. And I'm sure all of us can think of, sit of situations in the past where God actually did that. He actually fixed the problem for us uh, to his glory. Or he's going to give us the strength and the power to endure the situation. And I'm sure we've probably all experienced that as well. We look back on situations where we're like, I don't even know how I got through that. How how did I even endure that situation? Well, God's strength was supplying us, you know, whether by uh, uh, an immense amount or just a, a little amount, just enough to get us through. But either way, we experienced the power of God, the strength of Christ, and he helped us get through it. So Paul knew that he could get through all things uh, because of what Christ was doing in him. And so he he didn't have to worry about the future he didn't have to worry about um, what was going to happen. Uh, he didn't have to worry about this thorn in his flesh. He knew that God was going to supply what he needed. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And there in that context, he's saying, you know, he knew how to live wealthy. He also knew how to live in a very uh, poor uh, type of situation. He knew how to have a lot of money, how to have no money. Uh, he knew how to live in all different situations because he knew in all situations that Christ would strengthen him. He can do all these things. He can endure all situations because Christ strengthens him. And when we take that by faith and when we really get that etched into our minds, it puts so much peace in our hearts. It causes us to really be relieved of the anxiety and the fear that we have because we know that one of two things are going to happen, no matter what we encounter in this life. Either God's going to come in in a powerful way and fix the situation and answer our prayer, or he's going to come in and give us a strength and a power like we've never known. And he's going to help us to endure uh, whatever affliction, difficulty, trial we have to endure. But either way, he's going to receive the glory because his power is perfected in weakness. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.